Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're all doing well. Um, I've been looking forward to doing this one actually. Um, compared to last week, I was kind of bummed out about it. But this one, um, yeah, been feeling a bit more optimistic about the whole YouTube adventure, I guess. Um, so yeah, um, let's get into it. So um, as I mentioned, we were going to give Starfield a, a bash and we did. Played about five six hours of it and um i mean i hate to say this but it's trash well, i think i just need to i just need to accept the fact that i'm not a bethesda games fan um i think the only one that they've made that i've ever actually enjoyed playing was skyrim when it first came out you know the original skyrim not skyrim you know 0.5 or 0.8 or 0.11 however many remakes they did of it um, but yeah, I just just don't like Bethesda games. I don't like their general format. I don't like the fact that they make boring main stories and hype up their side stories. I don't like their emptiness that you just wonder about and vast nothingness. But I think the thing that bothers me the most about Bethesda games are the Bethesda games apologists. The people that are online in the forums chatting about how everybody should love Bethesda games and if you don't like it it's because you've not played enough hours but then if you've played 50 to 100 hours then you obviously liked it or you wouldn't have played that many hours it just you can't win with the internet these days but yeah I don't like Bethesda games that's that's the gist of it Starfield is an all for me I guess I'm just not a real gamer, um, is what it comes down to. But yeah, on a plus note though, we did, uh, my brother-in-law and I decided that we were going to do a co-op playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3, um, which I'm sure you guys have heard about. It's been a massive success. It's just launched on the consoles as well. So we've been playing that on PS5 and it is absolutely banging. Um, I think we've tried uh, a few different character setups each, um, but I think we're pretty happy with what we've got now. Um, we're probably only about two or three hours into the actual story, if that, to be honest, because we did restart a couple of times. But um, yeah, it just, it's lots of fun. It's really cool, um, really funny and high fantasy. And you can really tell that the studio really loved what they were doing and they put a lot of effort into it. Um, so um, yeah, I would definitely say Forget Starfield, Baldur's Gate 3. That's what you want to play this month. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, moving on from the games I've been playing, there's also a little bit more game uh, news, I guess, um, that we could talk about. Um, so there's a couple of things that I've noticed been ramping up in the video game rumour mill, which is the Nintendo Switch 2, as they're, they're calling it in a lot of the articles. So... Um, you know, from some big articles um, or big publishers, I guess, like news publishers like Bloomberg and Video Games Chronicle and Polygon, um, they're all talking about a um, kind of mid to late 2024 release of the Switch 2. I'm sure it's probably not going to be called the Switch 2, but that's what they're dubbing it now because, you know, they don't have an official release for it. The rumours from what they're saying um, is that it's going to be handheld similar to the Nintendo Switch which is why they're kind of sticking with the Switch 2 um, pseudonym for now um, but it's supposed to be a pretty decent jump in tech. Um, the screen's going to be um, is it OLED I think like the the Switch Pro which is supposed to be a bit better um, and yeah, just generally run the games a lot better. Um, some of the things that folk are a bit wary of, but also slightly optimistic of, is backwards compatibility, because the Nintendo Switch sold such an enormous amount of units that there would just be so many people that would be losing out on so many games if there's no backwards compatibility, as well as the fact they've got such a large online Nintendo store now that um, I'm sure would cause a lot of uproar, but you know, as much as I love Nintendo, I mean, as you see, a huge Zelda fan, I know they're not the most um, consumer friendly, I guess you could call them. Um, so I'm not 
I'm not like a Nintendo fanboy and, and just everything they do is perfect. I know there's a lot of stuff that they could do a lot, a lot better. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what the Switch 2 turns out to be, um, how, how they improve on it. There was something actually I wanted to point out whilst I was there. Uh, Whilst I was digging through all the, the articles here about the Switch 2 and when to expect it, what kind of rumours, there was this one here by uh, Tom's Hardware, which I thought was really funny. They're talking about the Switch 2 having, um, you know, NVIDIA's DLSS and ray tracing and, you know, base 60 FPS and 4K and all, all this kind of stuff. And it's like, I think this Tom's, from Tom's Hardware, just doesn't know much about Nintendo. I mean, I would be incredibly surprised to see a Nintendo console come out that's supposed to be that powerful compared to the competitors. You know, they're talking about it being just as powerful or more powerful than the Xbox Series S, which if the, you know, the rumours from Bloomberg and Polygon and Video Games Chronicles, which I think are much more realistic of it being a handheld console you know imagine carrying around an xbox series x with an inbuilt screen on it like i just it's not gonna happen i thought it was quite funny so i thought i would uh, just have a wee giggle about that but that's um another thing there um, i'm probably gonna wrap up this part of the video but we do have the sony state of play which is going to be i think it's later this evening thursday evening um if not it might be tomorrow um, so depending on time, I'm going to try and get some of that in, if there's anything cool or interesting on that that's worth sharing. So the state of play was a bust. Not much really of note other than the release date for Helldivers 2 for me. Everything else was a bit meh, nothing really worth noting. It seemed like the whole thing was just a, a last minute advert for Spider-Man 2 in the digital deluxe version with some extra costumes for your... Spider-Man's so you know very exciting stuff there but yeah a bit of a waste of time it was only half an hour at least so um you know didn't miss out on too much but if you like um Helldivers 1 then Helldivers 2 looks like it's a really big jump in terms of the the gameplay and the style so um it's definitely something I'm looking forward to me and a couple of my mates are actually thinking about re-downloading Helldivers 1 just to give it another bash just because it brought back some nostalgia so we're gonna get cracking on that maybe in the next couple of days but yeah um and i think that pretty much sums up this this week's video so thanks again for tuning in you know if you want to see dropping a like comment subscribe all that usual stuff um and yeah until then take care of yourself and i'll catch you in the next one